I was explaining to our clients at our recent two-day annual conference about when market forecasters and analysts often come out of the woodwork when financial markets are at extremes, whether or not they're at extreme highs or extreme lows, and how it's so much easier for anyone who likes to make forecasts to make accurate forecasts when markets are at extremes. But the challenge is markets are not generally at extremes very often. And this takes me back to a, a story um, that I remember from the trading pits in Chicago in 2008 when I was visiting there. And I was talking to an experienced trader who uh, was actively investing and trading in the pits on a daily basis and basically been doing that for his entire life. And uh, I said to him, I said, well, you do realize that uh, electronic trading is uh, a lot simpler than getting down in the pits and getting dirty and sweaty and throwing your hands around and buying and selling. And he said, yeah, I know that, Andrew, but I've been doing this for over 30 years and and I've, I've got my strategy of, of how I do it. And I said, well, do you mind me asking if you could share a little bit of, about this strategy with me? Because he seemed to be this cool, calm and collective guy. I mean, I was there in September 2008 and financial markets were exploding. That was the height of the great financial crisis. And he was just calmly walking down into the pits occasionally and making a couple of trades and walking out again. And you know, he said he was trading on his own, his own money. He wasn't running an investment bank or a hedge fund or working for one. And uh, he said he looked to make a few thousand dollars a day and he would uh, you know, take his jacket off and go home. And he said, the way that I do it is that I've been able to recognize with the guys in the pits, their pressure points when prices get to an extreme. So whether or not he was standing in the S&P 500 trading pit or he might have been in the, in the milk pit or he might have been in the pork belly pit or you know, whatever pit that he was, futures pit that he was in, he was able to recognize when markets were at extremes, um, at extreme stretches of highs or lows during an intraday period. And that sort of brings me back to, to what I was saying at the start of this video is that we often see forecasters come out when markets are at, at really overstretched or in the case of 2022, when they've been um, very uh, undervalued in around about June this year. And a lot of people say, oh yeah, we're due for a bounce, markets are gonna rally. You know, it's very easy to predict movements in markets when they are at extremes. But as an investor, it's a different thing putting your money into the market. But one thing that I have learned over the years and one thing I took away from that particular experience in Chicago in 2008, and I brought back and I, I you know, it was really quite a, a changing um, mindset for me in the way that I approach my investing because this guy really convinced me by watching him um, over a day, the way in which he went about it and the way that he spoke to me, it was just so profound that with respect to the share market, if you're going to invest successfully and give yourself a chance of making above average returns on investment, then you've got to be prepared to do what others are not prepared to do. And that is stepping up when everybody else is stepping out. But you don't step up and just swing at anything. You don't just step up and swing at uh, you know any old company. If you step up and swing at only the highest quality businesses when they are generally discounted and they are trading down say 20, 25, 30% from their previous highs and you understand why those share prices are cheap because you're following what's going on with respect to the company, then the probability is you're gonna make a lot of money over time. You don't have to swing very often. In fact, you won't get to swing very often, but that doesn't matter. You know, the less you swing, and when I say swing, I'm talking about investing, the more money you're gonna make, provided you're able to recognize when a company's share price is cheap. And that is not by looking at a chart or looking at the price and going, oh, it's down 25 or 30%. It's understanding the industry, it's understanding the company, it's understanding what's going on in the economy. And I'm not talking about trying to time markets Right? I get very frustrated when people say, oh, you know, should I wait, Andrew? Should I wait? Should I wait? You know, waiting is a fruitless exercise for most people when it comes to financial markets, thinking, oh, the recession's gonna drive prices lower, et cetera, et cetera. Every 12 months, there are great quality businesses throughout a calendar year that are trading down maybe, you know, 25, 30%. It happens every year. And if you simply swing and buy 
when everybody else is selling and getting out and you understand that business well and you're prepared to sit on your backside for the next few years afterwards, then you're going to make a lot of money over the time. You can't help do it. So the lesson from my, my trip to Chicago and my experience in the trading pits talking to this one particular trader is it's not rocket science. It's actually pretty simple, irrespective of whether you're trading in a pit or electronically. If you wait for markets to be extremes and you understand the human buying habits of people and the emotion that goes on and you're prepared to step up when they're stepping out, you can do very well over time. Have a good day, guys.